Hi, my name's Evan, and I'm going to save you all tens of dollars today, <laughs> possibly 20. Um, this talk is a, kind of a devops -y guide to how to, once you have a React website, how to deploy it, how to host it in the cheapest possible way, uh, because I'm sure. Um, there's a repo. I'm Evan Toller on Twitter. Um, and I'm going to put up uh, some links uh, throughout the talk. If you want to go there on your phone, that's awesome. Uh, click the buttons, do the things. Totally cool. Do, do that now. Um, so this talk uh, was inspired at the last uh, CLJS uh, meetup, CLJS full circle situation. Um, at the party, uh, well, you should go to the party next year. It's awesome. Um, I met a number of folks that were learning JavaScript uh, in, in their various boot camps. And they spent a lot of time talking about like how to do React programming uh, or Angular, and they had these really awesome websites, but they were struggling to figure out like how do I host this? Why do I have to pay for this? Um, what's continuous deployment or continuous integration? How do I do that kind of stuff? So the, the repo I linked to earlier, and you'll see it again, uh, is a very, very dumb and basic website, but it's all about the operations. So this is actually a DevOps talk, not a JavaScript talk. Tricked you, sorry. Um, and before we get into that, just really quickly, who am I and why do I care about this stuff? I worked for some companies. Uh, most recently, I was the chief product officer at a company called Who, it's here in Seattle. Uh, but more importantly, more relevant, I am the maintainer of the Node.js uh, server frame framework called ActionHero. Uh, it's probably the best server framework, so you should probably check it out. Um, and because we are an open source project, we are incredibly cheap. And hosting all of our stuff for free is something very valuable to open source projects. Um, so if you find yourself also making an awesome open source project, maybe this is going to be helpful to you as well. Um, and the techniques I'm going to go through are actually how we build actually our JS, uh, the customer website, how we build our documentation website, and how we do a bunch of other stuff um, as well on the project. Uh, so the goals. Uh, we want to use React to create our website. Uh, React is really a great candidate for this because you end up with a collection of static assets, so you can host them very cheaply, but you can still do dynamic stuff. The browser can put stuff through the API, the browser can do dynamic things, so you can still have an interactive website um, without having to do anything for, for, on, a, uh, on a view server, on a regular server, which is really nice. I want to pay exactly $0 for my hosting. I want HTTPS. I want a custom domain name. Footnote, star on the domain name, you do have to pay for your domain name, 12 bucks a year. Um, I want continuous deployment. Uh, does everyone know what continuous deployment or continuous integration is? Maybe show, let's just show of hands if you know what those, those words mean. Okay, mostly everyone, but not everyone. So basically, rather than going through a uh, manual process where I have to type something to deploy my website, I want it to happen magically. I want to like git push and like some gears turn somewhere in the cloud and then my website is updated and I don't do anything. That's the dream. Um, I also want to use a CDN, Content Delivery Network. Um, so rather than people having to request content from my one server, it's kind of spread out and cached all around the world, so it's fast uh, for people who may not be using where my server is. And yes, I know we're talking about things that are probably overkill for most small projects, most student projects, or maybe even most open source projects. But it's all free, so why not? And also, as your site gets bigger and more popular, you're already, you're already good to go. Uh, these techniques are used by a number of like real companies doing real things, um, and it works really great. So um, here's my amazing website, next-static-hosting.eventaller.com. I'll leave this up for a second. Pull it up for a second. Here it is. Uh, this website is amazing because not only does it have a photo and a gradient, it also uses the GitHub API to load the number of stars that this repo has. Um, so if anyone stars it in the next couple of seconds, we'll see that number change. But that's really just to prove that it's doing something dynamic. Um, it's really fancy. Um, so the tools we're going to talk about are React, Next.js, which is uh, tooling around React to kind of help you build pages, help you make server-side rendering, do a bunch of stuff that React by itself doesn't handle. Um, Circle CI, which is a continuous integration tool and company, and uh, GitHub Pages, which GitHub runs and, and, and does for you. So show of hands, who knows what React is? Awesome. Who knows what the next JS is? Last week. Great. 
Who knows what circle C9 is? About the same with different people. And who knows what GitHub pages is? Okay, cool. Now yeah, I know where to focus. Thank you. Um, and all this stuff is free. Well, that's the point of this. Everything's free. If you're open source or a student, if you're a company, you probably have to pay. Um, so things one and two. Um, so Next.js is a wrapper around React, let's call it. It's a framework. So you write normal React things, uh, but it gives you routing, it gives you service and rendering, it handles all the web pack shenanigans for you so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's very opinionated, so you might not be able to do some of the fancier things you might want with it, but it's a really, really great way to get started. Like, I want to make a fully React website. Handle it for me, I'll be able to You make pages, they call them. So you make a top-level component in a folder called page. You make one called index.js, that's your index page. If you make one called about.js, that's your about page. Real simple, real dumb. Uh, and there's three commands that matter. Next, dev. If you run that, you get hot reloading. You can look at stuff on your laptop as you change your React files. It changes the browser stuff for you. Magic. And then there's a build command and an export command. And this is really important for us. Um, you can also run next as a server if it has to do more dynamic stuff. But in our case, we wanted to build our project, spit out HTML, JavaScript, and CSS for us to get these static assets for us that we're going to end up posting. So these are the commands we care about. Um, some really dumb examples. Uh, I have one index page, which has, uh, I am exporting my index page. It has an H1 called Next Static Hosting. There it is. Uh, someone start it, thank you. <laughs> Um, it has like a description, and I load a GitHub stars component to load my GitHub stars. Real dumb. What does my GitHub stars component do? Uses the GitHub API. Async await, which is awesome. <laughs> I didn't even catch my errors because I was lazy. Um, but I'm like, hey, get my repository details, return the amount of stars that I have. That's all it's doing. NPM again has amazing packages. Somebody, not me, wrote this GitHub API client. It's great. Very easy to use. And that's it. That's my site. Yeah. Um, now the DevOps stuff. So the goal is every time I type git push, I want to do these three things. These are the three core pieces of any continuous integration uh, process you activity. You build it, you know, make sure it works. You write some tests, and you run those tests. Testing is important. You do JavaScript, you gotta test your stuff, and then you deploy whatever that means. Get the code to the server and help to do something. When you use Circle CI, you get a super sweet visual representation of this, and they change colors as you do things. So, in this example, my build step is running, and running for 15 seconds. Test and deploy are waiting. You can like, graphically see the dependencies, which is pretty sweet. Uh, Circle CI called these workflows. And the way, and if you click on one of those and you drill in, you can actually define these kind of sub steps. So, I'm like, get the code, run my, my lint. Thing, do the test and like save my test results somewhere because I'm going to look at them and see if it's past and why. And the way you define this stuff is in a YAML file. So uh, Circle uh, likes you to make a dot .circle CI folder. You make a config.yaml. And uh, does everyone know the YAML programming language? Awesome. Sort of like JSON, but easier to read if you ask them, that's what they say. Um, <laughs> And so like I have some jobs. Do build, do test, do deploy. Deploy depends on test. Test depends on build. And that's how you can kind of define the steps in your process. Um, and then you get into step. What do you want to do? And you're basically running bash commands. Like I want to run the standard module. I want to run the just test command and have some wacky formatting. And you can write whatever you want, which is really nice. Um, as long as your tests take under an hour, it's free. So you have plenty of time to do whatever you want. It's really nice. Um, and that's kind of how you set this up. So you just write one config file. And there's plenty of really good documentation on this to do whatever you want. NPM installed in there somewhere, obviously. Um, and that's how you set that up. Next up, GitHub Pages. So GitHub Pages is the thing that GitHub gives you for free. If you make a special branch called gh-pages, whatever you put in there is freely available through their CDN network, uh, which is really good, and uh, can be 
so you might be able to get that, which is awesome. Um, you don't really get any configuration for it, just whatever is in that Git branch is, is what's there, which is possibly dangerous, but also very simple. Um, you can make, you can point your own custom domain names at it. Um, normally domain names point at an IP address or a collection of IP addresses. There's a thing called a scene, which is basically an alias. So I want, uh, whatever I call this, uh, next dash static hosting dash .com to point at, thank you, someone started. Um, point at a GitHub domain, that's how that works. Um, and you can actually change the name of that GitHub branch, but that's the name called gh pages. So to deploy my website, I know I want to do these three steps, npm install, next build, next export, and then I have to like think about folders and files. I want to make a folder, take whatever next export made and like put it in that folder. I then want to copy some relevant helper files GitHub wants, like what's the name of the C name, uh, what, what URL is going to be certified, um, and I want to push it to the GitHub page branch. So it's really only these six steps, and um, and that's kind of it. Like you can write a small bash script to run this. You can tell Circle CI to do this for you. Um, and I'll show you an example of this in a second. But there are four gotchas. Uh, these always get me every time I do this. Um, the first one is by default, Circle CI only knows is only permissions to read from GitHub. You cannot write to the GitHub, so it's probably good for safety. It's probably a good default, um, but we want to change that. We want to give Circle CI permission to write to a branch. Um, we have to remember to copy our CNAME file over. So GitHub has a file literally called CNAME, which is what URL should I be hosting? Um, we want to tell Circle CI not to run our test suite against this branch. This branch doesn't have any tests, it doesn't make any sense. And um, the last thing, Je uh, Jekyll is a Ruby thing, we don't have a Ruby here, but uh, GitHub by default thinks you might want to run a Jekyll site at this, at this page, and we're going to tell them not to do that. So the gotcha is one by one. Um, this is what my deploy script looks like. Um, it's in that repo, you can check it out, you can copy it for free, don't worry about it. But basically, it's exactly the steps we talked about um, build the project copy it to a bunch of folders, copy a bunch of stuff around, make the git repo, uh, check out the github pages branch, and push it. Um, there's a lot of bash there. It's probably a little safe. You can probably do it much shorter than that. Um, and it really ends with uh, git push to our to github pages, and then delete everything. I'm done. That's, that's really the, the core of this um, once it's ready. Um, so, so gotcha number one is to give access to Circle CI to read and write to your GitHub repo, not just read it. You have to generate an SSH key. Uh, show of hands, who knows what an SSH key is? Most people. Cool. So you probably have one on your laptop, and that's how you authenticate to GitHub today. You have to make a new one. You have to give Circle CI the uh, private key. You have to give GitHub the public key, so they know they can talk to each other. You run this command. You paste a bunch of stuff in. It's pretty simple. Um, just have to remember to do it. And I always forget this stuff. And my tests always fail for like a day. And I'm like, right, that's fine. Um, and the last trick to this is in my circle YAML file, in my deploy step, I'm saying specifically use this SSH key. You can maybe get pull some sort of normal way, but use this SSH key when you're pushing to get help, uh, or else it won't work to get a yell at you. Uh, last thing is DNS configuration. We talked about C names earlier. So um, GitHub is really nice, and it gives you org or person name .github guy. That's where your stuff is hosted by default. And I'm saying I want uh, next static hosting at, at my domain to be the, the C name proxy. So it's it's kind of like a link about this to refer to that. That's how C names work. And uh, this site will be hosted for free forever now. Oh, <laughs> Anytime I make a change to my master branch, I just get get push and like it is. So hopefully that answers the question that I was asked at the, uh, the party last month. <laughs> any, any that's it. Any questions? Anything I can answer about the DevOps? <laughs> no. After doing all that, would you have just used search instead? Right. So you can use uh, now. Search, uh, Netlify, 
the number of these three static hosting things. What I, the reason I don't like those is I always have to do this step. Use your mind. I bet. So the question was, uh, that's a lot of stuff. Would it be easier just to use uh, Surge or, or Netify or one of those guys that, that knows static stuff uh, directly for you? And the reason I don't like it is I don't want to have to remember to do this step. Because you can't, you have to run your Babel stuff, you have to make your, your packs with the, Re, with the React app. The one I just don't, I'm lazy and I don't want to. And I also want to make it really easy, because this is for an open source project, for other people to contribute. And I don't want to give them access, well, this CircleCI has access. I don't want to make sure that they're all running the right versions of stuff. Um, and I want to be able, like, from my phone, just to change a file, you know, change the header file, and have this all taken care of for me and offload. Um, with something like Strip Surge or Netify, I would have to like actually be in a real laptop that can do all this stuff and have access to the production branch. Uh, that's why. Again, this is probably overkill for the example, but, but that's the main reason. There's a lot of people who visit your site, and the bandwidth usage make you be in a paid tier somehow. GitHub pages. Uh, don't tell anyone get up. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> they do not charge by the time. <laughs> do GitHub pages give you TLS? I'm sorry? Do you get HTTPS? You do. Absolutely, yes. The only, the only gotcha, I think that's gotcha number six, is by default, you're on a GitHub.io domain, and there's certain server GitHub.io. If you want your own domain, you're going to have to re encrypt um, something like that. Cloudflare will do it for you. Cloudflare is also free for open source. That's good. That's good for Awesome. Thank you.